Ian from RTO here. Welcome to another album ranking and yet another viewer request. And today we're looking at a band called Feeder. Now, this band, I sort of know a bit about them, but they're certainly not one of them bands that I would, you know, it's at the top of my list. I hadn't listened to too much of their stuff, so this was a, a fresh one for me, but all I can say is I really enjoyed listening to Fida, and although I haven't put any in my library, I know I've got them. They're all on Spotify, so I can listen to this whenever I like. So um, it was a, it was informative for me, and I've really enjoyed this one immensely. So Feeder, they're from Wales, and they were formed in Newport, down in South Wales, in 1994. They've released 11 studio albums. There was, as I said, they were formed in 1994, but. They come out of a band that was formed in 1992 by vocalist and guitarist Grant Nichols and drummer John Lee and bass Simon Blight. Um, after the departure of another guy called John Cunham, they changed their name and they brought in a, hot, a bass player called Taka Hirose and came out as Feeder. So... A um, bit of sadness in the band, but we'll talk about that as we go along. So, 11 albums. So we'll get cracking. So, coming in at number 11, we've got the fifth album from 2005. And it's called Pushing the Senses. Um, we've got Grant Nichols on the lead vocals, backing vocals, Taka Heros. A or Harose on bass, Mark Richardson from Skunk and Nancy on drums, and we've got um, Fran and Doogie, Fran Healy, Doogie Payne doing the backing vocals, and Audrey Riley does the cello on some of the tracks. First track on here is called Feeling a Moment. This is one of them tracks that starts off with some backwards music. I never understand that, but once it starts going forwards, it's not too bad. Um, Bitter Glass, to be quite honest, this sounds like anything done by other bands at the time, uh, like Manic Street Preachers and Stereophonics. There's no difference, it's all the same sort of generic sort of rocky pop stuff. It's okay, I don't dislike it, it's just it just sounds a little bit generic. Tumble and Paul, Fall, uh, it's okay, but it's a little bit repetitive in the lyrics. Um, Tender, this one's okay. Um, got some nice guitar work here from Grant. I like quite like that. Um, Pushing the Senses, the best track on the album. This is full of energy. Um, it's one of them feeder tracks with lots of strong riffs and some really good drumming. Really good song. Um, Frequency, very melodic. I quite like that track. Um, Morning Life, pleasant enough song. It just lacks a little bit of energy. Uh, Pilgrim Soul, really good rocker, lots of um, energy more than on the previous track. Pain on Pain, it's quite a depressing song. I'm not keen on this one, you know. Get your antidepressants ready for that one. Um, Dove Grey sounds very pleasant, but does lack a little bit of energy. Now, I thought this was a pleasant enough album, but there is a little bit of that, lacking that full on riff machine that feeder have been um so i'm going to give this an rto ranking of 5.5 okay then coming in at number 10 we have the 10th album that was released in um, 2019 and it's called tahula it's a three-piece four-piece band well three-piece with two uh, different drummers on this one so we got grant nichols on the vocals, guitars and keyboards. Taka Heros on bass. Um, we've got Carl Brazil doing the majority of um, the drumming and Jeff Holroy drums on three tracks. First one is Youth and this is Jeff Holroy on the drums. Really good start, sharp, pump, punchy opening, great guitar riffs like that track. 
Blue Sky Blue, more punchy riffs on this, and the lead guitar work from Grant is pretty good on this. This is a track that really harks back to their original days. Um, Daily Habit, like this one as well. It's an electric tar style busky track. Um, I like it, it's really nice. Then it goes into a really rock track as well, so you've got the mixture of this basic electric guitar with no effects on it and then it comes in with all the effects and all the glory um fear of flying strong riffs in this one very solid track i've got no problems with that one rodeo now this is really good but what is the highlight of this track is the solo on it very very good then we get the title track to hula another good track um it's got some lovely keyboards in this that really fit in with the song. Then we get shapes and sounds. That's okay, nothing wrong with that one. Guillotine. Um, the only thing I really like about it is the guitar solo. It's not, it's sort of trapped in its own self. Um, then we get my favorite track on here, it's called Kyoto. Um, I'm just thinking who does the drumming on this one. Now, this is Carl Brazil. Carl Brazil's a pretty good drummer and it's really solid. Then we get Kite, really catchy hook in this, gets you straight in. Windmill, it's all right, it plods along. And then we get L Lonely Hollow Days, bit of a filler track here. Not particularly fond of this. It's a really good album, but there's nothing on here that really is outstanding. Um, but it's some sort of return to form for them. It's going back to the original ideas of the band. Um, it's an album that I'll probably listen to again anyway because it has got some good. It has got one or two great tracks on it. Um, so I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of six out of ten. Okay, then coming in at number nine is Comfort in Sound, uh, released in 2002. Now this is sadly the first release after the suicide of their drummer band Lee, John Lee. Um, very sad. Um, so there's a, lots of uh, sort of reflection on this. And this was the first album that Mark Richardson drummed on as a full-time member of the band. So we've got Grant Nichols, um, Taka, Heroes, Mark Richardson, additional musicians. We've got Audrey Riley on the strings again, Enrico Tassimo on the trumpet, Charles Gillingham on accordion, and Matt Page on the piano. Just the way I'm feeling. A really good song, nice riff, riff. Very sentimental words as well. There's plenty of this on this album reflecting about poor John. Um, yeah, it's a nice song. I like that one. Come Back Around. Really good drop. Typical feeder sound on this. Got some really so strong sounds. Then we get a track called Helium. This is quite grungy. But I do like the guitar riff. It is really raw. Raw and nasty riffs. Child in You. This is a lovely son song. I'm sure it's reflecting on John Lee's life. It's such a really nice song. Very nice words. Comforting sound of the title track. Really gentle rocker here. Lovely guitar sounds on this. I like this. Forgot about tomorrow. Sounds not too much like Beautiful Day by U2. <laughs> um, and then we got Summer's Gone. A little filler track. Very genetic. There's nothing. It's a bit lacklustre. Then we get a track called Godzilla. Now this is the shortest track on this album, but it's the best one. This is heavy, lots of distortion. Love that track. Then we get a track called Quick Fade. Uh, it's all right. It's nothing special. Find the color. Solid track. Yeah, it's just a, just a solid track. It's not one that 
out like that goes, oh, I really want to listen to this over and over again. But it's just track going, yeah, that's a good track. That's the sort of track it is. Um, L love Pollution, one of the slower tracks on here. It's really good. I love the arrangement. The string arrangement's pretty cool. The guitar work from Grant is particularly good on this. Then we get Moonshine. It's all right. It plods along. It's not the best track on the album. An album full of emotion, of course. You know, it's got some really good tracks on here. Reflecting on what happened to the band and the effect it had on them when sadly John took his own life. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 6.5. Okay, then coming at number 8. I've got the ninth album now. Uh, it was released in 2016 and it's called All Bright Electric. Uh, this is when they went down, they're a three piece, back to a full three piece here. It's Grant Nichols, Nicholas, sorry, Takahos and Carl Brazil. Anna Stubbs does some backing vocals along with Hannah Sky Nichols, Nichols Nicholas, some, some sort of relative of Grant, no doubt. Tom Manning does a couple of bits of drumming on here as well. Uh, then we got Nicole Thorpe Larson on the keyboards, as long as with Brian Spurback. First track on here is called The Universe of Life. Now, I love this track. This reminds me of very early Muse. Something that could have come up in the first two albums by Muse. And I think that's why it's my favourite track. It reminds me so much of that rawness. Uh, it's a really good track. Eskimo, really catchy song. Um, love the lick on this. Great vocal from Grant. Then we get a track called Geezer. Uh, drumming on here is fantastic. From Carl. Uh, great riffs again from Grant. Solid track. Paperweight. Another really catchy tune. There's lots of catchy tunes on here and there's some hand clapping on here and normally I don't go for the hand clapping but it really works on this then infrared ultraviolet the atmosphere on this at the beginning is wonderful the keyboards give it a really sort of sense of atmosphere strong guitar work that really complements the keyboards um oh Mary <sighs> this is where I struggle a bit with some feeder songs some of them are, uh, they've got lots of energy and this one's just flat as a pancake. Doesn't do anything for me. The Impossible, love um, Cole Brazil's drumming on this. The best bit of the track actually, it, this is, it gives it that extra depth. It's sort of, if it weren't for the drums, it'd be quite a dull track I think. Um, Divide the Minority, don't like that track. It's another one of them tracks I'm not keen on. Um, Angels and Lullabies, an interesting track. Lots of keyboard on this. Got br sounds like brass section, and I just love it how it sort of complements the rest of the track. Um, Hundred Liars, little bright track. Riffs and drums are fantastic on this. Another day on Earth reminds me a little bit of Elbow. That's ah, a really good track. I'd say this is another good album from a very consistent band. I don't think they've ever put out a bad album. Um, they've just been pretty consistent. And this is one of them. And I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 6.8. Okay, coming in at number 7 is their 11th and most current album. And it came out last year. And it's called Torpedo. Now this is a bit of a strange one because the only official members in the band at the, at the time were Grant Nichols and Takahiro, but the additional mu musicians are Carl Brazil on some of the drum drums do some some of the drums, Jeff Holroyd drums who's previous drum with them, Ryan Suburba is back on the keyboards and Tim Rice is just keyboards and string arrangements. First track on this one is called The Healing, great track. Very uplifting. Got a nice melody to it. Catchy tune. Then we get the title track, Torpedo. This is really good. It's hard and heavy. I think this is brilliant. It's just... It's one of them tracks. You, no long intros. Bang. 
straight in really good then we get a track called when it all breaks down solid track great vocal from grant his vo voice hasn't seemed to have changed over the years it, you know there's no you know since their debut album his his voice has not changed really good song magpie another really good song i love the start of this one some really strong um riffs very heavy metal <laughs> Um, riff to start with the vocal is good as well hide and seek one of the weaker tracks on this is okay decompress another solid rocker more of them driving riffs and solid drumming and um, wall of silence solid track again lovely guitar work from Grant very very good slow trings Tarka's bass line on this is terrific <laughs> really drives the song along Born to Love You, it's alright, I'll just sit on the fence, it's just a pleasant track. And the last track, Submission, bit of a filler track, it sounds sounds too much like other al um, songs on the album, I don't know if this one's a, one just to fill it up, I don't know. Being the most current album, and 25 years after the debut, they're still making good music I think, uh, as I said, Grant's voice hasn't changed. That's some really strong tracks on this. And that's such an accolade to this band. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 7 out of 10. Sorry folks, I need a coffee. Oh dear. A bit bunged up today. Okay then, coming in at number 6. We have the debut album. Released in 1997. And it's called Polythene. So we've got the original lineup of Grant Nicholas, Taka Horos, and John Lee on the drums. First track is Polythene Girl. Lots of the life of this, the bass is great, John Lee's drumming's gone, it's raw, it's just really good. Um, My Perfect Day, yet another really good track again. Again, reminds me of Muse, of what they were doing at the time. Just raw and solid rock. Cement. Love this track. Remember this one, this one. I first heard it and I thought, now that is a pretty cool cut track. I love that opening riff. Then we got High. That's got a really um, good start to this. The acoustic style really sets it off. And then it goes into this real solid rock sock rock track with a solid solo um, then we get my favourite track on here Crash I remember when I heard this I think I heard it on the radio I thought wow who's that so this is the first track I ever heard by Feeder and it still re remains one of my favourite tracks Radiation it's not too bad it just lacks a little bit of beef in places you know I like the guitar riff because it sort of keeps coming in and out. Really good. Suffocate. A little bit hollow. It needs a little bit more bass in there. Descend. A really good track. Some strong riffs on this one. Stereo World. Brilliant this is. A good rocker. The guitar works good. The drums are good. Really good. And you can see this is the way they were going to go change I like this it's a slower one it's got a bit of body to it it really is good the bass line really helps okay the only thing I've got guys it is a bit repetitive on the on the vocal but apart from that it's fine tangerine love opening riff is brilliant John Lee's drumming is fantastic bit grungy bit raw bit raw good stuff forgive a uh, pretty solid trap and then 20th century trip I just found that rather dear, dreary and boring I'd say it's a decent debut album from Feeder uh, it's got some really good tracks on it as for most bands first album they still haven't really sorted out where they're going to go and they sort of developed on this and went on and it was a bit of a breath, breath of fresh air for 1997 so I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7.3 Okay, then coming at number five, we've got the eighth album from 2012. It's
it's called Generation Free Show. It, although I said it was released in 2012, it should have been released in 2010. After their previous album, Renegades. However, the band decided to hold more recording sessions for the album, so it took a little bit longer. Uh, this is Grant, Nicholas, Takahuras, and Carl Brazil. First track is called Oh My. Really good track. The keyboards really do it for me. Catchy song. Borders. A little bit. It reminds me of Bon Jovi. Um, but Grant seems to sing the vocals better than John, Bo John does. Um, very commercial. <laughs> no, I don't know why they did a commercial track. Idaho. Love this track. Love Carl dr strumming on that. Fantastic. Hey Johnny. A little bit different for them. I like the riff. The backing vocals are really good as well. Quiet. It is a gentle track. It's got some good guitar on it. It's a mixture of the stereophonics and Manic Street Preachers. Pretty good. Sunrise. Great track. Solid feeder style rock music. Generation Freak Show. Really good song. It's got that Muse feel to it. Now the difference between feeder and Muse, I think, is feeder just stuck to what the fans wanted and the fans really liked. Um, Muse just went off in a different direction in rock music and they picked up a lot of new, they picked up new fans but they've forgotten about their older fans. I don't think Feeder have never forgotten about the people that got them where they are. And that's what, that track's good. Then we get Tiny Minds. This is my favourite track on this one. Uh, it's very heavy. Grant's vocal is good. And you get a little bit of gentle in it. And then it goes back into the heavy stuff. It's really, really good. All, in all honesty, not keen on this. It's not the best track on the album for me. Headstrong. Good old-fashioned rock track. This is a mixture of metal and rock and licks and solos. Good stuff. Fools Can't Sleep. That's solid enough track. Nothing wrong with that one. Children of the Sun. Now this includes a little hidden track called Skylight. Yeah, they're both a bit dull. I always seem to put one, at least one dull track on the album, and this is theirs. But on the whole, it's a really good album. It's got some songs that really rock. Very consistent. Um, so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 7.5. Okay then. Coming at number four. We go to 1999 and the album yesterday went too soon and it was their second album so it's Grant, Tacker and John on this one first track is Anesthetic like this I like the distorted guitars on this really good Insomnia this is one of my favourite tracks on the album big hit for them Got a lot of that, a lot of punk aggression on this, and that's what I like about it. Picture of Perfect Youth, an interesting track. Um, very similar to what they were doing on that debut album, but they've sort of took it to the next level and they've given it a bit more depth. Really good song. We got the title track. Yesterday went too soon. Great guitar effects on this. Yeah, it's it's one of them tracks again. You know, they've it's very similar to what they were doing on that debut album, Polythene. But it, they've, I don't know if they've listened to Polythene and go, okay, we need to do something to give it depth. And they've done it again on that really good. Then we get Radio Man. Now, this is one of my favourite tracks by Feeder. Um, it's, got, it's a little bit gentle, but it's the way that the track flows I like. It keeps a pace and then it speeds up a little bit but it doesn't it's a very nice flow some tracks that do this stop and start and slow down it can it gets a bit bitty but this has got a natural flow to it then we get day in day out another of them great drums solid drubbing from drum john lee love this track tinsel town 
again one of the filler tracks on here um, you're my evergreen it's a bit teeny bop don't like it dry love this one I love the mystical strings and the guitar hole in my head great little punk song to me lots of powerful riffs really good so well very interesting vocal from Grant on here really good gives it a little bit of atmosphere paper faces a good track the keyboards that give it extra depth because without them keyboards I think it'd be a little bit shallow um, Bubblehead worst track on the album is just horrible a really good sophomore album you know so you know you have a very successful debut album you've got to come up with the goods and feeder did with this they did a really good job here they were going in the right direction they sort of listened to, as I said they've listened to that debut and they've just improved the tracks so they're not so shallow so I'm gonna give this one an RTO ranking of 7.6 okay then we're up to number three top three this was hard for me because even though I'm not the great, this um, got all their albums. These three were tough because these three are great. Um, so coming in at number th three, we have the seventh album from 2010, and it is Renegades. Uh, it's Grant, Tacker, and Carl again. Uh, first track on here is called White Lines. I love the bass line from Tacker on this. Oh, really meaty bass line. Guitar work is then complemented with Grant. Really good. Call Out is another high energy track. Just got everything that you want in a rock track. Um, Renegades, a nice little rocker. I like the catchy tune, the drumming's good. Fantastic little track. Sentimental. Oh, this is heavy. This is heavy. <laughs> great bass line from Tacker again really drives the song the bass is a little distorted as well I do like that but then this town again some very heavy riffs on this catchy tune though down to the river this reminds me of Muse again um, again as I said before you know that this is really what Muse should have been doing instead of that techno rubbish that they churn out now. Um, then we get my favourite track on here, Home. I love the start of this. You get that riff and you get the little taps on the side of the drums, uh, on the rims, and then you get a brilliant drum coming in, a great bass line as, as ever. Barking Dad, Barking Dogs. This one sort of carries on from Home, so I like these two tracks together are really good. City in a Ruck. Carl's drumming on this is probably the best on the album. It's a solid track. Left, walk, right. So punk. <laughs> you know, it's just what I was listening to as a youngster. Punk. The punk rock sound. Really good. Then we get the end. Another great track. Driving riffs. Uh, a great album. Not a bad track on here. Um, the last five tracks though are absolutely killers. Heavy, hard, ferocious. And I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. So coming in at number 2. Go to 2008. For the sixth album called Silent Cry. Now this is the last album to feature Mark Richardson before he went back to Skunk and Nice. Um, so we've got Grant, Tacker and Mark. Opens up with We Are The People. A really good opening track for an album. Love Mark Richardson's drumming. I like Mark Richardson's drumming. I think he's very, very good. It's a great vocal from Grant on this. It's Sumo, another good song. Mark's drumming on here is exceptional again. He really goes out with a bang on this album with his drumming. Miss You. It's got that punk feel to it. Aggressive rock music. There's nothing wrong with that. The great riffs. Tracing lines. Very solid. Grant's butt singing on this is really good as well. 
Silent C Cry, the title track. Catchy tune. String arrangements, keyboards, a good mix there, really good. Fires, lots of energy on this one. Again, Mark Richardson's drumming is pretty spot on. Then we get Heads Held High. The start of this is really acoustic. Then the, it builds up into, into a great track. The, it's the keyboards again that really lifts this track. Then we get a track called 818. Terrific track. The drumming really adds to it. Who's the Enemy? Again, solid. Then we get this 34 second thing called Space. Why don't they just tack it on to the beginning of Into the Blue, which is the next track? Because <laughs> they sort of go together. Uh, I like the solo on this. So I sort of consider Space and Into the Blue as one. Um, it's a really good track when they play together. Because when you play Into the Blue to the start, it's sort of it's a bit abrupt, but you put when you listen to it as on the album, and it flows better. Then we get my favourite track on here, "Guided by the Voice." Uh, this drumming's on it, some delicate guitar touches on this one. Um, then you get a little bit of speaking, which I'm not always con keen on, but it works on that one. Then the last track. I hope for, I don't know if it's sonorous or sonorous. Um, I like this. this. It reminds me of Space Dementia by Muse. Probably why I like it. Really good. Lots of tracks on this album. There's 13, but they're short, sharp tracks. I think the longest one on here is four and a half minutes. And I think, as I said, it's got some of Mark's best drumming he did in feeder uh, it's a very very strong album it's one that is now sitting in my collection because I think this is just a tremendous album as I said I haven't put any in my collection but this is one that has been put into the collection uh, and I'm going to give it an RTO ranking, out ranking of 8.4 ok then coming at number 1 now for once, I think I've gone with the fans' favourite. So a lot of fans like this album. It's their third album. It recorded in 2000. And it was released in 2001. And it's Echo Park. Now what I did discover, this was recorded not very far from where I live. It was caught, recorded in Great Linford Manor, which is on the outskirts of Milton Keynes, which is about 17 miles from where I am so it's recorded local um, so on here we have got Grant Nichols Celeste sorry I can't give him Nichols Grant Nicholas Takataka Horos and this was the last album that um, John Lee performed on it because a year later he sadly died so first track on here is a track called Standing on the Edge love to the start to this I like that how some tracks start with that muffled sound and then all of a sudden it comes through clear and it's that bass line from Tacker that really drives it uh, then we get Buck Rogers I think this is probably one of the best rock tracks of 2001 everybody liked it, even I like this uh, it's not very often I go with trends, but uh, it's a great song. Um, then we get Piece by Piece. Love John's drumming on this. The arrangement is a bit psychedelic with a modern t twist to it. Really good. Um, Seven Days in the Sun. I love the riffs on this. Tucker's bass line is terrific. Love these sort of tracks. We Can't re Rewind, solid track. Uh, John Lee's drumming is the highlight. Um, turn. It's got different styles of guitar playing on here. Delicate bits added. Really good layers. A fantastic track. Then we get my favourite track on here. And it is one of my favourite tracks. Again, it's Choke. Um, I love this because of that driving bass line. And John's drumming on top of it, really tight 
engine room on this one. I love it. It's a really good track. Then we get Oxygen. This some um, Oxygen, sorry. Um, this is where those surround sounds of atmospheric rock start. It's quite eerie. Um, it gives it a little bit of an edge. The bass line really is quite eerie on that. Um, tell all your friends the bass line again. Steady drums and drum. John, great little track. Um, Under the weather. This is pretty good. It's got a nice punky post-punk sound to it. Um, it's got some really good funky stuff. To driving bass line again. Great track. Satellite news. This is the longest track here, but it's a little bit, two minutes too long. It, it should have ended two minutes. It just sort of, the last two minutes seem to go round and round and round, and they don't. No one wants to get off the roundabout. Then we get Berg. I love this. Dirty riffs. Very punky. That's probably why I like it. I mean, I had heard this album, because it was a big album for them. Uh, and I have got to go with the flow here. I do like this album. It's got lots of post-punk sound on it. Crunching riffs. Some great drumming by John Lee. It's one of them albums that I've enjoyed listening. It's probably one of their heavier albums as well. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.5. Okay. I can't remember who suggested Feeder. But thank you very much. It's sort of... Uh, Open my eyes to modern rock. There's some great tracks on here, these albums. Um, I've thoroughly enjoyed this one. I, I, when you go into a band you don't know much about, it's. I know I get some stick while you're ranking albums of bands you don't know, but I love it because in this instance I've really got into the, their sound and I really appreciate what they do. Okay, that's all for this one. Um, coming up next is a very special um, retro ranking today. It's in memory of um, the great Jeff Beck, one of the greatest guitar players this world has ever seen. Um, I've been watching quite a bit about Jeff Beck this week. been listening to some of his albums because we are going to be doing an album ranking on him very, very soon. It'll get put above everything else because it needs to be done. So join me for that if you're a big Jeff Beck fan. Okay, I will see you later. Bye for now.